By the time this video ends, you'll know everything there is to know about getting the Beacon mic on your stream. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Joe Finley and today we're talking about the Beacon mic again. Now we've done a whole overview on this microphone. You can actually see that video up here, but now it's time to break down exactly how to take this mic and to set it up for your stream. And something that's important to know, if you also have the Beacon Mix Create and you plug in the microphone, something's gonna be missing when you look at it in the application. And that's actually gonna be the mixer because the Mix Create and the Beacon Mic have the exact same mixer. So it actually won't be available to enable if you have both things plugged in. But since I've unplugged my Mix Create for the purposes of this test, we have it available here. Now, when you click on it, It'll normally ask you to enable. I've already done that, but it'll just let you know that some new audio sources are going to appear in your routing table for Windows. First, we're actually gonna start with the simplest thing here, which is the lighting. And we're gonna click on that and we have some options here. So you have solid color, gradient, reactive meter, sparkle and spectrum cycle. The solid color, simple, just one color. I'm using my new gold. I know it's orange here. You'll sometimes have to kind of make adjustments and see what the microphone actually physically looks like when you're doing it. And then you have a gradient. See, it's actually set to animate here. And right now it's got a speed of three in this direction. And if I go this way, now it goes a lot faster. And if I go the other way, it actually turns around. And then ring brightness, go all the way up. I like to bring it down on the mirrorless cameras. It's actually the lower it is, the more brilliant it actually is. A reactive meter, same kind of thing, except when I talk, you actually get a reaction from the secondary color. Uh, you can actually hook this up to either your microphone or your headphones. So whatever audio is playing through your headphones, it'll just do that automatically. It's really up to you. So you could have something that's going to your music or something like that. Uh, meter sensitivity, that's obvious. Ring brightness, same deal as before. Sparkle, gonna give you a couple colors and it's just gonna give you a different way of the light animating. Then the spectrum cycle is just one constant thing. It's very pretty on stream. Actually, the colors are really beautiful. Now under here, we have some other lighting options so when muted it can do nothing meaning nothing's going to happen to your lights uh turn the led ring into a solid color i have it set to turn red makes sense it's the most common one but you could have it do whatever you want or you can just turn off the led ring altogether so then any of those will be an indicator that you've obviously muted except the do nothing i don't really get why that's a thing and then when the USB is suspended, it can also do nothing, turn off the LED or change the brightness. So now let's go up to the actual mic chain here. And this is the most important part of the entire setup. Uh, so what you wanna be doing here is getting your voice just so, managing the room noise that you're dealing with and all those other things. So the, what we're gonna do is we're going to actually start a new profile so you can hear what this sounds like at its base. And then we're gonna get it to where we want it to sound. So you notice I'm talking a lot softer now because it's actually started me off at a default of 7 db of mic gain so let's bring that up so i can hear it but i can also see my voice here so the ideal thing we want to be sitting in the blue as i'm talking you can occasionally kind of dip up or do whatever but now i can see basically what's going on with my voice and if i'm talking in the right register and in the right general area i'm pretty happy with this overall because it gives me a chance to get a little loud and not be too crazy and get a little quiet and then not be too crazy quiet 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 you know uh so we go from there maybe add a little bit of extra gain on this side we're pretty okay i think that looks pretty good to me we've done that now i'm hearing a lot of mic noise in this room we're quiet for just a second so that's actually quite a bit of noise right now we can handle that with the next couple of steps here so the first thing we're going to do is this noise suppression and you can see again the wave of my voice but there's also the wave of the noise if we're quiet again Awesome, now what we're gonna do is we're going to activate our noise suppression and we have a couple of options here. So they're slightly different and we're gonna start with the first one which is our adaptive. So I'm gonna go back to being quiet for a second and you're gonna hear how the adaptive takes care of the noise in the room. I mean, how cool is that, right? <laughs> 
The processor is using AI to figure out the general room noise at all times and eliminate that sound from your output. It's good in any room where the noises could change. You could have wind or you could have an extra fan on sometime or just variables to the constant that can be some people's rooms. So I love it very much and you can see that the amount and the sensitivity can be changed here. Uh, I don't tend to mess around with these too much because I'm pretty happy with how it takes care of it in general. But now let's have a look at the snapshot by comparison. So we'll go back to this noise. So it's nice and noisy again. So we're gonna turn it on. I'm gonna turn on snapshot and this time I'm gonna take a snapshot and we're gonna listen to what it actually does. and it's gone. Essentially what it's doing, it listens to the noise, it kind of creates a profile for it, and then it just says remove this profile completely. This is more of a scenario that you wanna use in a room that has a constant noise. Adaptive is great and is probably best for most use cases, but in some rooms, you always just have one constant noise and it's the only thing you're really trying to get rid of. So it makes it a lot easier, just use the snapshot, just gets rid of it and you're ready to go. So the next thing we're gonna go to is Expander. So we have here, this is essentially your noise gate. What it's doing, it's kind of doing the exact opposite of what the compressor does, which we'll get to in a second. And all it's doing is it's taking something that falls under this line here and eliminates that noise for you. So if we look at the actual noise, if I'm being quiet, you can see that it falls off and all the noise is essentially falling underneath this line already which is good but we want to protect against a little bit more than just that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring it up to somewhere below where my voice is and now it's gotten a lot nicer hasn't it you need to find a balance here when you're doing this though because you need to be able to talk quietly because sometimes you do talk quietly and you might want to whisper to people see i dipped a little bit there and then you want to make sure that you don't go underneath that line because the second you go underneath it you automatically drop off that audio so you're going to get things cutting out like what i'll do is i'm at minus 52 right now i'm going to take it down just a little bit more just to be safe minus 57 that sounds pretty good i'm happy with how i sound so we can move on to the next thing which is our compressor so now what the compressor is doing it's doing the opposite side it's going to take anything that goes over a certain point and it's going to tamp it back down to make sure that we don't kind of go over a certain level and the one thing i love which is available with both the compressor and the expander there's a simple and an advanced and i know kind of the settings that i like you will have to toy around with this a little bit to figure out what works best for you i would suggest start around the parameters that i'm setting here and then go one way or the other and then see how it goes for you because if you're a little bit louder you might want to change things up a little bit here if if you're a little bit quieter you might want to bring it down a little bit so now if i talk you can actually see in the attenuation area here you can see how much the audio is actually being lowered when i get too loud so if i get high like this it starts to bring it down so i never go over that certain point uh uh you can see it's never it's always going to kind of protect me from going over a certain level and i do apologize i just yelled it's like three o'clock in the morning as i'm shooting this and my poor family's asleep i'm not a good person so i'm already happy with how i'm sounding overall with this and i haven't even touch the EQ yet. I'm going to get to that in a second. But the last thing you can control down here is your headphones. So you can see, I can see my mic monitor and my headphone monitor are two different volumes. And then you can do some headphone EQ. This is not going to affect your microphone. It's only going to affect what you're hearing in your ears. I'm just going to kind of leave that as is for now. And then you actually have subwoofer settings here to up that a bit. On the amp power side, you have different amp powers for different uh, headphone types. So you have in-ear monitor mode so it's going to take it down a little bit quieter for you line level it's kind of the next one up just slightly louder is when you get to normal mode and then if you have high impedance headphones so anything over 100 ohms then you can use this mode and then that'll help you out quite a bit all right there's one tool here that i want to use before i get into the other stuff and that is just because uh, i'm trying really hard not to allow it to affect my voice right now but the sibilance on this microphone uh, can be a little bit powerful, especially with your mouth so close to the mic and stuff like that. So there's a de-esser here. Now, if I make a harsh S, like a S, it's pretty bad S, but if I play with this a little bit, so S, you can see that it's actually improving just with this de here. And I'm gonna show you another way to get around that when we get into the EQ part here as well, which we're going to start 
at exactly this moment. Okay, so jumping up into here now, we can see the different EQ bands. This is just the simple EQ, and this is the what would be considered the flat preset here. If you look at the drop down, there's flat and not flat. So if I click the not flat, it gives you a little bit of that California smile. And this, for a lot of people, would be simple enough just in and of itself. I'm happy with how this sounds. I like to toy with it just a little bit more. So to get into that is what we need to do is we need to click on the advanced EQ here. And then you're going to see it's going to give you something completely different. Now you can add multiple bands from here and then change it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have a four band EQ here. So right now I currently have two. So I'm going to add two more and then I'm going to move them around to where I kind of want them. So the first one I'm going to take here, I'm going to take right around here at the 50 kilohertz and I'm going to bring it up about four to five dB, maybe a little bit less actually, because the bass on here is already pretty good. Now I'm gonna come over here and I have some different options. So to simplify this as best I can, the shapes that are being applied here are basically telling you what the shape of your wave is gonna be on each band. So selecting here goes up like this. And then what I wanna do is I wanna select this one that it gives me this so it goes basically straight across and then i'm going to bring it over just to get over this so i'm going to take this band and you can actually go looking for noise so if there's a spot if there's a frequency where you're getting like a particularly rough noise you can actually cut it out completely so what you would do is you're going to take this here and you're going to move it around and find that really noisy noise if you can find it and then i could click right here and it dips that completely out. Now, I don't really have a noise here, but this is just kind of an example. Now, here is your little Q factor. As you increase it, you see that it thins the kind of frequency range that it's actually doing this to. So if you have a wider range of kind of a noise, you can cut a larger area out. For the most part, you shouldn't need to use a very large area like that, though. So if I play with these a little bit, so you can hear when I bring this up in kind of the mids, you can hear I get a little bit muddier in my voice. And if I bring it down too much, and I lose a little bit too much of that mid-tone. So what I want to do is I want to bring it up pretty much as far as I brought the other one down. I'm going to go about minus 3 dB here. I'm going to do that around 250, and then I'm going to do it again right around 1,000. And then I'm going to take this last one, and I'm going to bring it up again about as high as I brought the other one up. So I mean, as best I can, right? And then I'm going to change this to balance that final thing out here. So now we have a few other things that we can do. First thing I want to show you is actually the guide here. So if we click down on the guide, it's actually telling you what everything is now, which I think is genius. So this is sub bass, the bass muddiness, broadcast, nasal, lumen highs and S's, and then the highs and air. So it's basically telling you where your sounds are coming from. So like right here, again, this is my nasal. So if I really bring it up, it sounds a lot more nasal. I sound like I have a cold and I actually do have a cold, but that's not either here nor there. And then if I bring it down, then I get rid of a lot of that. Now I don't want to go too crazy. So again, I stay around here. The mid highs and S's. So this is the other way we were talking about the DSer, but if you really want to make sure that that's gone, you don't want to get too much gain on your EQ in this area. As I bring it up more in this area, you're going to have a little bit more of that sibilance. So what I like to do is I like to kind of keep it out of that area as much as possible. So now I'm overall happy with this sound, at least how it sounds to me. If you want to make absolutely sure that it sounds good to you, because sometimes when you're talking and you're kind of hearing your own voice and you're hearing it in here, you're not getting the same thing. They've given you a good little tool here. You can actually record your voice for 10 seconds and then you can play it back over and over and then make adjustments. So if I do that right now, let's give it a shot. Hey everybody, follow me on Twitter, twitch.tv slash miscastjoe, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. There we go. Now if I press play. Hey everybody, follow me on Twitter, twitch.tv slash miscastjoe, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hey everybody, follow me on Twitter, twitch.tv slash miscastjoe, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Okay, we're going to stop that. We get the idea. <laughs> I can only listen to me so much, but that's a good way to get kind of the variable that is hearing your own voice out of the picture. And I think it's a very good idea and it's a great tool that they've given you. Okay, so we've done all this. We've done the de -esser. Now let's have a look at some enhancements we can do. So we have a bass enhancement here and there's different levels here and we'll see what those are in a second. But let's see the amount here as I increase it you'll actually see up here that it's like expanding like a little diaphragm or something like that. And now you can hear just a little bit of extra bass in my voice, a little bit more explosiveness. It's too much for me because it's too low in the lows. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click through these bass enhanced styles and find the one that's best for me. So I'm gonna hit number two. And now you can see it's actually cut out 
the base in this area and it's more focused in the sub base here. If I click three, it expands a little bit and goes a little bit more into the underneath here, mostly in the sub base, and then into this muddiness a little bit. So I might even want to turn that down a little bit and, it, and enhance it if I wanted to. But for me, just a little bit too much bass for my voice. And then, so the difference between these two, if three, and four, I don't ever see much of a difference, to be honest with you. I'm sure there's something there that I'm not seeing as much, but the bottom line is I want to keep it fairly simple. So I like to have just a little one here and then not bring up the amount so much, just around three is good for me. And then we have over here, we have the exciter. So what we can do here is add a little bit more vibrance to kind of the presence frequency range uh, in your voice. So right now it's set for about 25. So just to hear the difference, if I take this all the way down, so now I'm just talking and it's fine. Now, as I bring it up, you can hear more and more of an increase coming from there. So that's a little bit too much. And again, when you've increased and it's in this S area, you notice that the hiss comes back pretty badly. You can probably mess with this a little bit and it doesn't really do a lot because we've done so much uh, boost here. So let's go back to kind of normal here and then we're gonna bring this way down. And then we can also adjust the frequency that it's kind of working around. So right now it's working starting at about 4,000 kilohertz where you start to dip into your S's. So what I might wanna do is come right out of that and you can see as it may move as I go. And then I'm gonna start at just around 5,000. Now we're not gonna have as much a problem. So as I get higher, it gets a little bit harsher. But if I come out here, see that sounds, that still sounds really good. So now I just have a bit more of a pop in the presence of my voice. And if I wanna just test it one more time, I can press play down here. Hey everybody, follow me on Twitter, twitch.tv slash miscastjoe, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. I think we're doing great. So what that's gonna do is let us move into the next step, which is our mixer. So this mixer, it's worth pointing out that this is a software mixer only. There is no hardware component to this if you're just buying the microphone. So there's a couple of uh, defaults that we can set up here that'll help you in terms of routing a lot of your different audio applications and stuff to different things in this mixer. Uh, so let's get those set up right now and then you'll have a much easier time moving forward. So the first thing we're gonna do is we have our chat as our default communication device and that is what we want. So right click and we're all good there. Now, what we're going to want for our default device, we're going to go find it, and it's the Beacon Mic system. So if I go here and say default device, so now generally applications will actually send to system, but this doesn't actually stop you from routing things wherever you want it later on. Next thing you want to do is under recording, you don't want your audience mix to be a default device. You're actually going to go to your voice chat mic and you're gonna make that the default device and the default communications device. So we click okay, and that stuff is all good to go now. It's also highly recommended that rather than routing something like a game, for example, directly to the game source, you wanna do that actually inside the game. So like say you're playing Fortnite, you can go into the audio options and it'll have like the playout spot and that might go out to your default device right now. You can set it to go through your game and then it'll automatically send here every time because those settings actually supersede whatever settings that you're using in Windows. So the first thing you need to do when you're setting this up, which I've already done, is to pick out your microphone under the mic here. Now these are your kind of default knobs to get started. You can't rename these or do anything like that. This is gonna say mic chat, whatever, and we can add other ones in a minute. You can change the color coding of these if you have a preference for whatever reason. So what you would have to do is you notice under this one and under if you have either of your hardware channels activated, which I'll show you in a bit, any of your microphone options show up here so you can scroll down through them and pick the one you want. But the cool thing is I can control literally any microphone via this mix. So all of the next items that we have here are gonna require a little bit of extra work. So what you're gonna need to do is uh, manually route different applications into these different audio sources to allow you to be able to control them for stream. And to do that, it's easy enough. All you gotta do is click up here and it's gonna bring you right to the uh, app volume and device preferences in Windows. And now we have all of our options right here. So we'll get a couple things out of the way right off the bat. So Google Chrome, there is a browser option here that we just haven't added yet, but let's go ahead and make that our browser as we scroll down and we find browser beacon mic. So we're going to click that. And now anything playing from this 
will automatically play through our browser source. So we should probably add that now. Now what we'll do is I'm gonna click the plus here and then you have your different options. So the ones that are already grayed out are the ones that we already have available to us. So what we have left is our game, browser, two auxiliaries, and then you can actually select two more hardware. So you can actually get two more microphones set up on this if you are so inclined. I am going to use this. I'm gonna have a second mic set up and I'm gonna be using this for my podcast. But you might also have a setup where you actually have a mic in a different location and stuff like that. And and you can get all of that set up through here as well. So for what we've done so far, I'm gonna click the browser and now here it is. And then if I go over here and go into this beautiful person's channel and then play the video. That. So that's it, it's just a simplified version of- So that's playing source. out. And then if I go and I look at my mix, and then being able to you can hear it. From here, rather and then than I can having to up. go into OBS, I keep hitting my- And bring it down to whatever level that you want. You're noticing that both faders are going at the exact same time right now, but you can change that by clicking on this little unlink headphone and broadcast sliders. So I do that and now I can bring it up in my headphones, but it hasn't changed for how you're hearing it. And then I can bring it all the way down. And then I can bring this one all the way up to the beacon mix right now. Yeah, you so guys are very simple. I'm not. Well, let's go ahead and pause because we don't need that right now. And that's how it works. And now you can actually see that it's available here as well. It went away because the audio went away, but as soon as I hit play again, it'll appear again. So now we have our music that we also wanna deal with. So I've got Spotify here. Now you'll notice when we go into here, Spotify is not available. And that's just because it's not playing any audio yet. So if I bring up my Spotify and then I press play here on some DMCA free music, now you can see that it's available and then I can hit there, and then I can go and find my music for Beacon Mic. I go down, music, Beacon Mic, and then I look here, and it's available. And then same thing, I can bring it up, or bring it down, and I can unlink it, and I can do all those other things. Also worth noting, you can actually physically mute any of these just by clicking on the sources here. The other thing you can do too, you'll notice down here, there's a button that says mute to all, so if I hit that, it automatically mutes it to those sources, but it does even more than that, which is a really cool little tool. So let's actually open this up and see what it does. You notice that there's a drop down here. So these are our mute options. Right now the option is to mute to all, but I could change this to mute to audience. So that's muting it just to the stream, or I can change it to mute to self. So that means it'll just mute going to my headphones, but it'll still go out to the stream, or I can mute to chat. So whoever I have, like if I'm in a Zoom call or if I'm on Discord chatting with my, you know, like my gaming squad or whatever, I can mute these sources directly to them and I can choose right here, which I would like to do. So it's like, okay, I'll mute to chat. If I have these going now, so this is going to my stream, this is going to my headphones, but the people who'd be on my chat wouldn't hear it. And we're gonna look down at the very bottom because there's some important information here about audio routing. So this is your routing table. It says so very clearly here. And you can see your personal mix, audience mix, and voice chat mix. And you can see that certain things are defaulted to already be off. So there's a reason for this. First thing, your mic relay is not going to your personal mix because what that would do, if I turn this on, I'm already hearing my voice through the mic because I'm plugged into the microphone. So if I had it again, I would actually hear my voice doubled up and then it's almost like a speech jammer scenario and we don't wanna deal with that at all. So it automatically does that for you. Then on the voice chat mix, you notice it only sends your mic relay. They're gonna hear me, but then they're not gonna hear themselves. They're not going to hear the music that I'm playing or anything from my computer. Or if I have a game going, they won't hear my game audio. So nothing that's going to distract them. They're just going to hear my voice and that's all they want. Audience mix, you can do literally whatever you want. So you'll notice that all the options here are the ones that are up here. So if I add more, I add a game, you'll notice it automatically adds down here and it has the same kind of defaults. And you can do that and just keep going and it'll just keep adding and keep adding from this point. Something else really cool on the routing table right here, you'll notice this little chevron here next to the voice chat mic. And if I click this, it's copy chat mic output to, and you can actually send the output of this microphone to any of these things here. So if you need to send a copy of just your own personal audio to any specific source, you can do that. And again, that's just another really cool little tool. I don't have a personal use for that right now, but I imagine I'm gonna find some place where that's actually gonna come up for me. If you have something that you might use this for, let me know down in the comments what it is. Now, if we go to our personal mix here, you can see that we can select two different listening devices. So I can select, for example, my headphones, which are my Beacon mic headphones, so that's plugged in here. And then my second one, I can actually make it my speakers. And then all I have to do is click and go between them. 
So I could hear what's going on in my headphones and you can see via the bars here that there's a visual representation of what's going on so I know that I'm hearing stuff and then I can bring it down and get rid of it altogether or bring it up and hear it even better. And then I can also switch to my speakers doing the exact same thing. So it's a really cool little thing to be able to do that all with one little click instead of having to go into Windows settings and change different things. Now the audience mix is just a source that you can send out to any application or DAW. You can send it out to OBS, you can send it out to Audacity, whatever you use, it can be used as a source uh, to capture this audio. Now, another cool thing that can be done here is you can actually send this mix to a different device. The most common reason to probably do this would be if you have a two PC setup. So what you could do is click here and then send it to this digital audio, which is actually my speaker line output on my computer. So then what I could do is click on that and then it would send it there. And then I can run a cable from my one PC into the other one. And then all of that audio would pass into my second PC. PC, all as one individual source. And I think that that is dope. So the last thing we need to talk about is really just organizing this stuff. Now we have these all in a specific order, but you might want them in a different order for any number of reasons. You might want certain items to be closer together because you use them the most. You might want certain things just out of the way because you don't want to have to alter them at all. You want them to be kind of out of sight, out of mind. But all you need to do to do this is just click where these dots are and drag wherever you're inclined to do so. Be mindful over here, if my profile has a little red dot here, that means I've made changes to it, but that they're not saved. So if I click save, it's done. The other things worth noting here, you can actually duplicate a profile, and then the trash can is obviously just to delete the profile. But there's only one thing to do now, and that is to take all of that mix and then move it into OBS. So what we need to do, I've already done it here, but we can show you all the steps, is we wanna go into settings, and we're gonna go to audio, and then you're just gonna take your input, whatever one you want, turn it into your audience mix. You will notice that you can actually take these sources individually and make them individual sources in here. So I can have my microphone as an individual source separate from my audience mix. And some people might want to do that, especially if you're dealing in VODs and stuff like that, and you don't want your music and chat and all these other things that you're sending out to stream to be something that you use if, say, you were making a short or something like that. Let me know down in the comments which of the next devices you want me to do a tutorial for, be it the Beacon Mix or the Beacon Mix create then i think that we'll essentially be done with beacon and we can kind of go back to doing everything else for a little while but as people are getting these items right now i want to make sure that you guys have something comprehensive to help you get started with it and not put that off until way later and then have you watch this stuff from somebody else i mean god forbid but i think that is it for this one gang i appreciate everybody so much make sure if you enjoy the video that you hit the like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed hit the notification bell so so you find out why my next videos are coming. And until next time, my friends, let's get to work.